just start a recording. Hi, this is Kerry Painter, the visionary mumpreneur, and today I'm coming to you from the Blackpool Tower, you can hold it. Uh, and I'm actually doing an interview today with an amazing guy called Swanee McCarthy, who I met online ooh, about two or three years ago now. And when I first met him, he had this dream of doing a bike ride, and we spoke about it, and 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 that, that dream has, has become a reality today. And I'm basically gonna do a quick interview with him, because he's passing right through my hometown, of Blackpool and we're in the beautiful Blackpool Tower and what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask him a few questions and let him explain to you what he's doing and why he's doing it and, and let him give out a, me a message and what I want you to do guys is get to the end of this video and just give whatever you can just even if it's only a few pence or a pound or whatever just give whatever you can because Swanee's you know Swanee's doing an amazing job and he deserves all the money we can get him for his charity so with that note, I'm going to hand it over to Swanee, so we'll flip this round. Flip it over to you, Swanee. I'm so good at this. So, do you want to hold it? Go on. Right, my first question is, Swanee, what, what, when did you decide, well, what inspired you to do this bike ride? And well, where are you doing it? A long time ago, I met a gentleman who was doing a very unique journey on behalf of his son who lost his life. And I thought that was such a beautiful tribute of a thing to do. Um, many years prior to that, I also lost my foster father to leukemia. And, you know, I thought about it. And as years went on by, I decided that I really fancy cycling around the coastline of Britain. So, number three being a rather unique number for me, I chose the third date, the third month, three charities and three islands. So, cancer research is one of the charities, children with leukemia is the second charity, and there's a lovely charity called T Haven, which caters for more of the unique children back in Wales and also offers parents respite as well. Okay, so how many and how far into this journey are you and, and kind of what how did you decide what route to take? Well, at the moment I'm a little bit over four thousand miles into the journey. And the route itself, well, I've been more or less sticking to the coastline as much as I possibly can. And, uh, yeah, it's been absolutely amazing. Have you, um, have you met any kind of really inspiring people along the way? Any amazing stories? Amazing stories, wow. I could spend the next seven, eight hours with you talking about <laughs> so many different chapters and moments of time and just pure magicness. Oh, there's, pick one. There's, pick one. Um, one man and his dog. Okay. Okay, um, it was a hot summer's day. I had not long just pulled off by the side of the road and decided to have... Um, some refreshment. I made some sandwiches early on in the day and more or less had just finished up and packed everything away. And a man and his dog, it was an eldish man who came around the corner. The poor dog was there with his tongue sticking out and I thought, ah, hang on, I've got just a thing for you. So I grabbed hold of one of my bowls and, and topped it up with some cold water from one of my water bottles. And uh, me and the gentleman had a good old chat, and then it was time for him and uh, the dog to press on. Well, we said our goodbyes, and a less than five feet away, the dog actually stopped, sat down, looked at me, looked at my trailer, and looked at me. And I thought, okay. Now, the, the owner of the dog was there trying to beckon and encourage the man to keep on going. He eventually was able to get the dog to start again and must have gone no further than around 15 feet away. And the dog stopped again, sat down, looked at me, looked at the trailer and looked at me. And I thought to myself, OK, what gives? And there I was, just about to set off. And by this time, I actually st 
looked at my trailer and I hadn't secured one of my bungee straps before setting off. And I thought, all right then, thank you for telling me like, you know. <laughs> wow. So uh, this dog stopped you from losing all sorts of yes. belongings. Yes. Oh yes, yeah. That was a vital bungee cord that I would have lost things had it not been uh, secured. So what happened when you tightened the strap back up? Um, the, the dog got up and just continued with the man. Wow. He did. That's amazing. Um, when I was up the very top of Scotland, of all the people, I met a chap from Cardiff. <laughs> wow. Um, what's quite also rather unique is last night I stayed at a, um, a bed and breakfast and there's an eldish couple who have been going to the neighbour's bed and breakfast for over five years now. Yep. Happen to be from the same town where I've been living for the last four years of Fishgad. You right. know, so it was quite unique to actually meet someone from my same town. Yeah. All the way up in Blackpool, of all the guest houses I could have stayed at. Um, last night and yesterday was quite a, a windy, rainy day. And I, and I just fancy some home comfort of a nice soft bed and a good hearty meal. So what do you do? That's, that's, you know, the weather in England is pretty horrendous and I'm sure since you started you've had some pretty horrible you know, wet weather. What, what is it that inspires you not just to pack up and say, oh, I hate this weather, I can't stand it. What, you know, what keeps you going? From the personal reasons why I'm doing this journey, has fueled so much of my own determination. I've worked a lot outdoors and I knew that when I was going to be doing this bicycle ride I'd be blessed by all the weathers. So from the things that people have personally shared with me, their loss, their grievance, their blessings, has, has fueled my own determination to a point where you can throw 20 brick walls in front of me and I promise you I'll find a way of going around them, over them, through them or even under them to get to the end of my journey. What was it when we were talking earlier you were telling me about <clears throat> friends of yours that you lost to cancer and things and you told me about um, was it a 19 year old boy who you were planning the route with? Like yes, that. yes. Um, I chat earlier on with, there was a young man, um, his nickname was Pi, and he's uh, a good hearted character. He was a little bit of a tow rag and began to sort himself out and uh, we chatted on numerous occasions regards to this bicycle ride as, it, as I've been planning this for the last nine years. And unfortunately a few years ago he lost his life by, uh, it was a hit and run. So you would say he was one of your inspirations? Um, yes, definitely. He was, um, I mean, I carry my time with him, with me, as much as I carry many other souls along the way with me as well, which, which has all deeply, deeply fueled my own determination, you know. Yeah. Mentally, I've seen myself starting from the bandstand of Aberystwyth, as much as I've seen myself heading from the north, coming into Aberystwyth, uh, down the big hill, uh, which is Penglice Hill, doing a lap of the town because of the one-way system, back to the bandstand of Aberystwyth where I started. So much has fueled my own determination for my own reasons as well as the things that people have shared with me. It's almost like an internal pool of energy, a bubble that cannot be burst. Beautiful. So, Swanee, how can people, you know, the, 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 this bike ride is obviously to, to raise money for these three charities and you know we want we want people out there to, to see this video and to be inspired and just give whatever they can but how can they actually go about doing that what do they have to do well there's I have a website which is www 
swantour.org.uk and people are able to donate online there. There's a little calendar section here as well which informs people of my movements and what's been happening from day to day as well. Um, there's a few photographs on there as well where I've taken along the way. Um, I do my best to do blogs and updates on Facebook and then from there I've got, uh, a, few, I've got a friend of mine who very kindly sponsored me in a way of uh, taking care of the website and the technical side and uh, he then transfers the uploads on Facebook onto the calendar on my behalf. Beautiful. Well, you got all the technical stuff covered then. Oh yes, and I'm truly <laughs> very much grateful because I'm not tactically minded. <laughs> yeah. So, as a, as a kind of finishing final note, Swanee, what if you were going to give a message to anyone who's watching this video now, what would you say to them? Well, I've met and lost a variety of people and all of which, and those I've met, I carry close and dear to my heart. But I guess the message I have to everyone out there is that whatever you do in life, follow your heart. Not for a man, not for a woman, but for yourself. Because there may come a time later on in life that you wish that you had done, or circumstances may change that you're no longer able to do so. So you only have one go. There's no fast forward, there's no rewind, only the time that there is. So make it count and be happy.